welcome back to my shed. This is where I make or repair all sorts of things for classic or vintage motor vehicles and machines. This is part two of a two part video showing you what I went through to fit a DRO to my milling machine. I also fitted a DRO to my 1940 South Bend lathe in part one. As you can see I'm about to start fitting the X scale. The same sort of issues occur here as did on the lathe insofar as that I can fit the scale to the back of the table but that restricts the Y slide movement by as much as 45 millimeters and that's not an option for me. Fitting the scale to the front of the table also carries its own problems like having a traverse motor that requires that adjustable stops and a pickup remain in place and that the hand wheel must be accessible at all times so what are my options? Well, it looks like I'll have to use more standoff spacers. As the scale is slightly wider than the table, I can use the slots at each end to place these spacers. To do that, I need two bits of aluminium. When machined, they should sit over the slots utilizing a shallow key to hold them in place. And they in turn will support the scale with enough room so as not to interfere with the Travis motor switch and allow plenty of room for adjustment. I figured I needed 35mm for the standoff and a couple more for the key. These two blocks are of similar size so I don't need to spend too much time dressing them up. None in fact. All I've really got to do is machine to depth both sides of the keyway and then finish off by reducing the central keyway down to 2mm high. The first cutout needs to be 13.5mm and so long as the remaining key is 9mm wide that'll do. This cut is just so that we can take it down to full depth. I did a quick gash in here to establish just how much more material needs to come off. That established, I set to size and ragged off the excess. I also had to run back down the same cut to remove the spring because this cut is about ready for sharpening. After raising the cutter by 2mm I got to work removing the excess material from the top of the central key. Fettling completed I got on with establishing the position for the two holes for the dovetail locking strips. The dovetail locking strips by the way I already had from an old project so I didn't see the point in making any more. One thing I had to remember at this point was that both blocks are left and right handed. As usual after marking out and spotting the drilling started with the pilot and then finished with the clearance drill. The eagle eyed of you will notice that the pilot drill isn't to full depth. It didn't matter because the clearance drill is long enough and I've got to drill an even bigger hole from the other side anyway. This drill bit is opening up the other side of these holes to allow the cap head screws to do their job without interfering with the scales. At this point I've fitted the dovetail locking strips to these blocks and I'm marking out ready to drill and tap the 6mm hole to support the scale.
after a bit of a fettle and a clean up they're both ready to be fitted in place at each end of the table slot. Each of these blocks with their studs were set in place and nipped up before fitting the scale. As with the lathe the penny washers will serve to allow any adjustment required before finally clamping the scale into place. The DTI was run up and down the top and the side of the scale body before the final clamping. Just here is a pre-drilled and tapped 6mm hole that I made off camera to suit this angle bracket that I also pre-shaped on the bandsaw. Before I finalised the angle bracket position I fitted the two sensor screws and nipped them up to hold the bracket in place while I drilled and tapped the final hole. So far this was the easiest one that I fitted. Now with the bracket firmly in place I removed the retaining strip. I had promised on the previous video that I might be able to show you how I set the studs but as luck has it I still had very little room to get the camera in so it looks like you'll have to go back and revisit my rather poor explanation in the first video. For this scale I had to use two brackets to support the sensor and like the front scale I appreciate the first bracket and marked the main body with a marker pen. This was to position the two drilled and tapped holes. Obviously after setting it in place it had to be as level as I could get it. To mount the scale I had to overcome a couple of obstacles. One was that the scale mounting face was about three degrees out of vertical and two I have some suds drain holes in the main casting that might just aim the coolant into the sensor and that's something I'd not want. To deal with the vertical mounting face first I had some 6mm thick bracketry that with a bit of pushing and shoving I could, with the help of a very big set of Stilsons and a stout vise, bend the said piece of 6mm aluminium plate into shape, which I managed to do, but while doing it a casual observer might have thought I'd lost it. Anyhow, according to the spirit level it looked good enough to mark out and machine the slots, which wasn't easy as the material was a bit gummy. I also profiled a section of the bracket on the bandsaw for some obscure reason, then finished dressing it on the belt sander. I mentioned earlier about an issue regarding the suds drain holes. I solved this issue by trapping a bit of brass shim as a deflector trapped in place by a penny washers that hold the bracket in place. I reckon the shim should be large enough to deflect a torrent of coolant. Before drilling a 6.5mm hole I confirmed that the scale support was vertical. If it needed a bit more tweaking it could be done in situ. As with the other scales I used another penny washer to hold the scale in place while the adjustments are carried out. But for the moment its only task was to stop the scale from falling off the bracket. As I was going to use another stud at this end I used the same idea that I employed on the lathe. That is I used a sharpened stud to mark the correct linear distance before drilling and tapping another 6mm hole to mount the stud. With the stud in place, the locking knots and the accompanying penny washers in place, the scale was mounted and set to the correct alignment, and checked with the DTI in the usual manner before the lock knots were finally nipped up. As satisfied as I could be with the scale settings, I turned my attention to the final sensor bracket, but all I had to do here was simply bolt on one of the spare brackets from the fitting kit. But it wasn't easy to mount the 6mm screws and lock nuts so I had to fit the top ones upside down so that I could reach them with the allen key. With that done my 2 axis DRO was complete and ready to use after fitting the scale covers and guards. 
I didn't buy a 3-axis DRO because mounting the third axis, the Z-axis, would require four more elements. One for the main quill support, the vertical movement, the second for the quill, the third for the head vertical rotation, and finally the head's horizontal rotation. Because I rarely alter these, I decided that I'd fit a simple low-cost vernier type scale to the quill, and only the quill. Before I could mount this scale, I had to grind the top off this awkwardly sighted stud. I didn't take it off, I just simply ground it down level with the scale face with a small grinder pad. And to protect the head and the threads behind, I simply packed it with paper. To mark the fixing positions for the slide, I used a small engineer spirit level and a set square. The bracketry was a simple 2mm thick two-hole link that connected the scale body to the stud. The only concern I had was if the top hole penetrated the gearbox, but I was lucky. The old scale readout had a manual adjuster that is now no longer needed, so I locked it off by setting it at the top setting. The link between the mechanical scale and the new vernier scale was a tad too thick. To fix this problem, I slipped a couple of washers in to allow full and free movement. As you can see, everything is in order, and all I've got to do is calibrate the DRO units. But I'll probably do this off camera, because the instruction book is about as much use as a fart in a colander. I haven't found the most appropriate place for this small readout yet, but I used a bit of angle line held down with a magnet to support this for the moment. I should be back to form once I've done some more alterations to the new house. I hope you enjoyed the video. See you soon. Bye for now. Mm -hmm.